January favorites. These are the products I've been loving this month. Let's do a monthly recap though. How has your January been? Mine has been cold. Though, oh my gosh, it feels like a lifetime ago that we went apartment hunting at the beginning of the month and the day that I'm filming it is officially February and we're moving this month. Yeah, so exciting. But anyways, how have your resolutions been going? Mine have been going pretty good. I'm a big resolutioner, okay? I make them every year and I actually do a pretty good job of sticking to mine. One of my resolutions this year was to read every night before bed. That hasn't happened. I did read one book this month, so I think I'm adjusting it just because you know what? Some nights I just don't want to read. I'm not a big reader. It's out of my nature to read, but I think I'm adjusting it for a more realistic goal for me is to finish one book a month. So I think this month I'm going to read the second Bridgerton book since the new season comes out in March and I guess I like do the series this year. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Anyways, have there been any resolutions that I failed? Probably eating healthy. That's always an issue of mine. I mean, I've been doing okay, but I've been, a, I'm a big snack girl, but I'm not as focused on that one right now. But the big one ha was reading for me, working out intentionally, which I've been doing a really great job of. I have a really good morning routine set in place that I created this month. It's made me so much more productive throughout the day. I've been doing pretty good, all things considered, with my resolutions. Let me know how you guys have been doing. Any hoosers, uh, January favorites. We're gonna start off with foundation. Huge foundation month this month. So let's start off with the top two favorites I'm going to have a rankings video of all the foundations that I've tried This is kind of giving away the top two, but like whatever. It's fine <laughs> sneak peek So we'll start off with the foundation that I'm currently wearing. This is the NARS light reflecting foundation This is officially my favorite everyday foundation at the current moment I mean, it doesn't beat out my favorite, favorite foundations like my La Mer, my Tom Ford, my Dior, but right now, this is the everyday foundation that I'm reaching for the most. It's so lightweight, a little goes a long way with this. I mean, you know, it doesn't give you full coverage, but you only need just a little bit, and I swear it spreads across your whole face. It's really comfortable on the skin. It looks really healthy. It's not the best long wearing wise. I feel like it does sink into my smile lines, but it just looks so pretty on the skin. It's so fast and easy to apply. I've been loving this for every day. The other foundation that I tried, I think I tried this last month, but I just wanna talk about how great the Dior Forever Matte Foundation is. They did reformulate this to be clean, and I think they did a really great job with this. It wears beautifully, even though it's a matte foundation, it doesn't dry out my skin. I wore this New Year's Eve. I was sitting over a hot pot. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a soup that is simmering. So, you know, there's lots of perspiration happening, and my foundation looked good as new even after having my hot pot so I'm thinking this might be really useful when I live in Florida so I've been loving this foundation as well side note it just occurred to me to address my jewelry I've been wearing this a lot since Valentine's Day is among us this is from Kendra Scott and if you see me wearing the heart matching earrings also from Kendra Scott. Right now I'm wearing these earrings from Made by Sydney. I will have her shop link down below as well. Been loving her earrings as well. Okay, anyways, since this was such a big foundation month, I've been playing a lot with different methods of application. I'm a sponge girl through and through, but I've rediscovered two brushes that I've loved for foundation. So the first one is truly a rediscovery. This is the Sonia G base brush. This is from the Lotus Collection. You know how expensive Sonya G brushes are, but they really are top of the line, best of the best, best quality. I believe this brush you're really not supposed to use liquid products with. I could be wrong, but I distinctly remember Sonya G herself telling me the hairs on this probably aren't the best for liquid cream products. And if that's the case with this, I don't care. <laughs> I've watched this a bunch. I've been using it with foundations. Nothing seems to be compromised yet. I love the way that this spreads foundation. I love the way that it gets along the crevices of the face. It's really great, you know, for getting around the eyebrow, poking in between the nose. I've used it also for cream bronzer application today. You just get it on the tip and then blend up, swipe it down the nose. This brush has been so versatile. I love the way that it spreads out liquid products. Sometimes I go in with a sponge afterwards to press the product in, but it's very rare that I love a foundation brush, but this is one that I've absolutely been loving the spread that this gives as well as the shape of this. It's so unique and how it just gets around the crevices of the face. 
base. I know there's lots of fan brushes on the market. This one, if you can compare it to a few others that I have, you can see it's so much more dense and short, which really does allow you to kind of blend that foundation out. The other foundation brush that I've really been enjoying, this does a particularly great job with the NARS foundation, is the Refer number 31 brush. Honestly, this might have been in my last favorites. I've just been loving this and I wanted to talk about it because I've been using this a lot also to apply my foundations and I did also see that Refer has this on a deal right now where you can get it for 50% off which is $50 which is expensive for a brush I realize that but for these types of brushes that is a great deal but side note you know what you can do to make this a good value they're having a deal right now where you can get their new moisturizer which is really really good by the way I've only used it a few times but so far I've really been liking it you can get this literally for free it's like pay what you want I don't understand the promotion but you can get this for zero dollars if you get this and then this brush for fifty dollars getting these two for fifty dollars that would be a steal anyways love this it doesn't leave streaks it really presses the foundation into the skin I find it also works really really well with those thicker foundations like maybe the new Charlotte Tilbury beautiful skin which by the way I'm not a fan of but you know how it has that thicker consistency that can be a little bit harder to push around your skin this is nice and dense to really work it out so so both of these have been awesome for foundations. I have a rediscovery for you. I pulled this out to go with my NARS foundation since it is a NARS concealer, but I forgot how phenomenal the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer is. So it's a little pot concealer. It has a nice soft matte finish, and I feel like it just blends over the pores and smooths them out, and it instantly makes your foundation look smooth. I've dealt with a lot of not very good foundations this month, and whenever I've used this, I feel like this has saved the the look. The concealer I found, it really made the pores show right here. I would put this over top and this would help smooth it out. It looks great and smooth on the under eyes. It's a lighter shade so I've also been using it to just kind of brighten up the center of my face and smooth everything out. The finish on this is so beautiful on the skin. It's really been versatile. I've been using it for an eyeshadow base. I've been using it to quickly clean up the brows. I forgot how useful a good potted concealer can be and this finish is just beautiful. So great, great concealer from NARS rediscovered it, re-loving it all over again. Okay, next product. I wasn't sure if it was really a favorite of mine, but at the end of the day, I truly love how this looks on the skin. So Danessa Myricks came out with the Dewy Cheek and Lip Palette. I do have some reservations about this palette. Let me just say that I do use this formula in my makeup kit. She has, let me show you, has these Lux Cream Palettes here. I mean, these are really awesome if you want to get these. I'd almost recommend these over this guy if you want a ton of shades in this formula. Mine is all messed up because like I said, I've depotted these into my makeup kit. So I'm very familiar with the formulation. And what drew me to this was I wanted something that I could personally use for myself, get my grubby fingers in and not have to worry about that aspect. So I got excited about this because this and the other shade that came out are definitely much more friendly to the average makeup consumer. The consistencies in here are different. Like this one you can see is much more glossy and then the other three are a little bit more hard. I actually typically, when it comes to my makeup kit, I use these more so for lip products. I feel they are a great natural finish onto the lip. So if you get this, it is really great on the lip. I've been testing it a lot more on the cheeks on myself and I I love the way it looks on the cheeks. The application is a little bit tricky because they are a little bit more sticky. It takes a little bit more working out. It definitely feels like you're putting a lip gloss on your face, which that's a feeling that I don't really enjoy. But I have to give credit where credit is due once you take that extra time to blend it out, it really is so beautiful and healthy on the cheek. Another application tip that I would recommend is actually putting down a first layer of it and then powdering your face. You will find that the powder actually does kind of cover up your work, but then you go in with a second layer over top of the powder that will keep the glow on the cheek that this gives, and it also will help the product last longer. I would recommend, if you're looking for something super long wearing, definitely set with a color powder over top. Cream products fade. They just do. This one fades as well. But I found that a good happy medium is blended in over your liquids, then powder, 
and then put a second layer and that normally catches on pretty great as well. That's a good happy medium. But these really do give just the most beautiful youthful look on the cheek as well. I don't love the application. I really don't. But it's so pretty on the cheek that I've been putting up with it. It, it makes my cheek look like plump and I, I love it. So <laughs> I do really enjoy this formula and I've been having a lot of fun with it. I'm not gonna lie. Let's move on to highlight. You've seen me use this a ton. I feel like I've talked about this in so many videos but it's just been a relevant relevant topic, I suppose. So this is the Pat McGrath and Bridgerton Skin Fetters Sublime Skin Highlighter. For me, I love this shade Incandescent Gold. This is going to be the lighter of the two. This is just so divine. I absolutely love how pretty the embossment is. I have it as my highlighter right now. It's nice and glimmery. You can really build it up for something that is extra or you can really add a soft layer to give something that's a little bit more natural. This isn't the most natural highlight though. If you like that glow from within this is not what you want but I love the texture the finish of this the way it looks on the skin I've been using it non-stop I just realized I meant to apply this to my inner corner and I forgot so let's do it now I've been loving it as an inner corner highlight it really is a pretty soft white gold it's how I would describe it it's really just, it's it's so good you guys the formula is good it's just stunning stunning highlight I've been using it a ton I've used it many times all over the lid as well this month I've used it a ton this is definitely my most used highlighter this month it's very very pricey you know I don't feel comfortable saying you need this like you don't need this it's an expensive highlight but if you think you will find as much joy in it as I have, then I do recommend it. Let's move on to eyeshadow palettes. Oh my gosh, I'm going to expose how basic I am with these choices, but ooh, you guys know, deep within my soul, I love a good neutral palette, okay? I am basic like that. So let's talk about this first one that I've been loving. I'm almost embarrassed to feature this because it's so boring. It's, it's not gonna be worth it for a good number of you, but I cannot lie, I really have been enjoying the Chanel Mediterranean eyeshadow quad that came out. I mean, look at this. How boring is this? I know it's overpriced. I absolutely know that, but you can see how much I've used it. The embossments are completely gone. So I'm wearing it all over my eyes today. I did like the most simplest, simplest look because I knew I was wearing a bold lip and I've really been trying to wear bold lips more often. And that is another reason why I've been gravitating towards palettes like these because these go good with a bolder lip. But there's something about the finish of this that really really is so elegant. It's a very refined shimmer here. It's more than the average shimmer. It looks smooth on the lid, but it has little flecks of glimmer. I really love this formula. It's quite sophisticated. I know at the end of the day, it probably is not worth the money, but it's a quad that I've been reaching for it makes me feel bougie because it's chanel and the finish on it is really beautiful i have a few other chanel palettes not a lot but this one i noticed i feel like the finish has a little extra something special to it that my other chanel palettes that i don't have so for me this is my favorite chanel palette i feel like it looks so special and natural on the lid if you like color if you like bright makeup don't but <laughs> don't buy this don't waste your money but i know there is a huge crowd of you that are looking for soft sophisticated looks that you can wear to work make you feel a little extra special in the morning when you apply this is it this I love it I appreciate all facets of makeup okay I love this finish another one okay I'm not gonna lie I've only used this once yesterday but I just know it's gonna be a favorite so I might as well add it now this is the new Tom Ford extreme badass quad which currently is sold out it's sold out on Beautylish in like 10 minutes but I can I, I know why this is my favorite Tom Ford palette that's launched in a couple years so this is the metal lust quad it is so good you guys again basic people okay if you are basic like me you will like this but if you like cool tone neutrals which you know I'm a huge fan of this is it this is mm. so you have to like Tom Ford and you <laughs> have to like cool tone neutrals if that is not your real house don't get this metal lust is my favorite it's the palette that I want to reach for every day. This new formulation from Tom Ford is so divine. The mattes are extra buttery and smooth. I'm obsessed. This to me is my ideal everyday palette. You know, we have that little special luxury packaging, luxury experience. You know, that's why I pay for luxury. And the colors of... Mm. 
mm, I love it. I will let you guys know when it comes back into stock because it is that good. Okay, let's finish off with lip products. Let's talk about a quick lippy that I've been loving to throw on just later on in the day when I'm done filming without having to think about it. The Chanel Rouge Coco Balm. I love this formula. It's so comfortable and this particular color in my rose, very flattering to my skin tone, I must say. It really livens up my face. I feel like it makes me look more youthful. So this is going to be my go-to summer lip product, I can already tell you. It's really hydrating on the lips, super comfortable. It gives a nice level of pigmentation without being too much. It's gonna go with whatever makeup I'm wearing or whatever makeup I'm not wearing. It's gonna be great for those no makeup makeup days. I feel like this type of formula is really, really trendy right now and I'm loving this. It's the most gorgeous color, so yeah, loving that. And then, of course, the lipstick I'm wearing. Charlotte Tilbury came out with a Lunar New Year lipstick collection. I wasn't drawn to it because I'm not so into bold lips. I'm a nude lip kind of girl, but K-Romance has changed my mind. The fact that this lipstick is so bold and has been making me adjust what makeup I want to wear in order to wear a bold lip says a lot. So this is a lipstick I've been loving. Like I said, it's K-Romance. So it comes in this limited edition Lunar New Year Red Tiger packaging. And it's this deep kind of maroonish lip. I love it. Now I will say I have like a dry spot right here that the lipstick caught onto. But other than that, such a beautiful formula. It is her matte formula, which is quite comfortable. A little bit drying, but all matte lipsticks are. It's the least drying matte lipstick you can probably find on the market, but this color, ugh, I love it. It's the reason I decided to go with this boring Chanel eyeshadow today, just so I could rock this in a video. If you're looking for a good deep red lip that hopefully will encourage you to wear deeper colors, this has been it for me, so I love it. And then finally, by far my most favorite lip gloss this month has been the Dior Lip Maximizer in the shade Opal. So this is part of their spring collection. I forgot how much I love this formula in general. It leaves a very subtle tingle on the lips, which I honestly believe it does slightly plump the lips. The finish of it is so comfortable, it's not too sticky. And this particular shade, I love it because it has an opalescent sheen to it. I would say on the lips, you can see like a pinky sheen. It's not anything too obnoxious, but it goes with every lipstick. It's so pretty. I love the formulation of this gloss. Honestly, this kind of rivals Pat McGrath and Fenty, if you ask me. It's so, so bomb. So yeah, I've just used this like almost every day, so <laughs> I had to add that. All right, you guys, so there we have it. Those are all of my favorite products in the month of January. Let me know what some of your favorite products were, what some of the worst products you tried were, because you know what? I tried a lot of bad products too this month. Those Charlotte's over my matte eyes. No, thank you. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Thank you so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one. Thank you.